Hello, this is a webcast for Tomorrow's World. In an Associated Press article dated December 8, 2014, the author wrote, Scientists in a lab used a powerful laser to recreate what might have been the original spark of life on Earth. The article continues, The researchers zapped clay and a chemical soup with a laser to simulate the energy of a speeding asteroid smashing into the planet. They ended up creating what can be considered crucial pieces of the building blocks of life. The article continues, the findings do not prove that this is how life started on Earth about four billion years ago, and some scientists are unimpressed with the results. But the experiment does bolster the long-held theory. The author says, these findings suggest that the emergence of terrestrial life is not the result of an accident, but a direct consequence on the con conditions on the primordial Earth and its surroundings. The study was published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The controversy continues to rage between those who believe in a God who created everything in the known universe and those who do deny the existence of any God figure with power and authority. At least since Darwin, atheists have devoted great intellect, effort, and money to devise some plausible argument to replace the simple biblical statement in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Popular author Richard Dawkins wrote a number of well-received books attacking religion as dangerous and a destructive fantasy. He isn't alone when he claims that there is no God. But he isn't unusual in these ideas since humans far back in antiquity have rejected the laws and teachings of any god they disagreed with. For one to be considered to be educated in the West today, one must believe in the theory of evolution. But the inspired word of God states, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, Psalm 14 and verse 1. And yet, a growing number of scientists are risking their careers and their reputations by stating that the physical world could not be here without intelligent design. They aren't afraid to admit our human limitations. In the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, we read, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God wants us to know who he is and what he does. God creates. That's what he does. He is the creator. When he first introduced himself to Adam, he did so by showing Adam the sun, the moon, the stars, and then having Adam carefully consider and even name all the animals. We have the same opportunity to learn about the Creator by considering His creation. Every human who has ever lived must make the same choices. Are they the only important life form in this universe? Do they know everything about everything? so that their life will be truly happy, successful, fulfilling? What about their children's and their grandchildren's lives? Are their ideas the only ones that matter? To my mind, a major reason for the creation story in Genesis chapters 1 and 2 is to challenge us to think. God begins by saying that He created the heavens, the earth, all the elements, the living creatures, and all the laws that sustain this cosmos. The unspoken question then is, can you do that? And if not, perhaps we should listen to the only one who can. You might like to read our free booklet titled, The Real God, Proofs and Promises. For more Bible answers to today's issues, 
visit us on Facebook or at tomorrowsworld.org where you will find free videos and literature. Thanks for watching.